Hello, and welcome to the Marginal Mind Matters podcasting series on social exclusion. And it's presented by me, Siobhan Henry, and produced by Karen Westman. Marginal Mind Matters, also known as Margins, is a registered not-for-profit company. And our approach is to help marginalized groups cope with the inner suffering of social exclusion. And we do this through self-help and support groups. The majority of people in the world are socially excluded. And social exclusion is referred to by many names. Marginalization is one, and that is why we call ourselves margins. Social exclusion is being treated unequally for a number of different reasons, and it shapes how we think and feel. And if we are not aware that we are excluded, then we can't face our thoughts or feelings, and we can't do anything about it. Discrimination forces us into social exclusion, and the systems of prejudice tell us every day that that is where we belong and that is where we should stay. So this podcasting series is about showing the socially excluded that we can escape social exclusion and achieve the lives we want. But we need to face the inner struggle of social exclusion before we can do that. So our mission at Marginal Mind Matters is to help empower one socially excluded person at a time in the hope that we will eventually lift all of marginalized society. Each week we will choose one emotion that relates to the internal struggle of being socially excluded and we will do four things. First, we will define what the emotion is. Second, we will explain what purpose this emotion serves in society. Third, we will explain what happens when we feel this emotion. And lastly, we will explain how to free ourselves from that emotion. In this podcast, we will be discussing the emotion of humiliation. So what is humiliation? Humiliation is the process of being made to feel embarrassed, ashamed or without dignity and it takes various forms. If you are socially excluded and you live in an environment that is chronically marginalized, and by chronically I mean marginalization is entrenched regularly in your society, then you probably experience humiliation regularly too, and it's most likely direct humiliation. And we're seeing this phenomenon a lot on social media. So it includes open acts of racism and aggression, laughing at others and mocking others. So this is direct humiliation, but humiliation can be indirect too. And having your existence ignored is one way, patronizing responses to severe and sometimes life-threatening situations can also be humiliation. So you could be experiencing something very serious in your personal life and you could approach someone for help and their response may be, let it go, get over it, or it's not that bad. So these are also forms of humiliation. I am personally intrigued by a new form of humiliation, which is false modesty. And I think it arises from the fact that our society is overrun with technology and people pretend to be nice and modest so they can avoid getting a negative public opinion. And false modesty is one way to do this. But it is another form of humiliation because it is pretending to care to see yourself as equal when in fact you see yourself as superior to others. And we see this behavior pattern among our elected politicians who visit our communities and carry our babies and speak to the elderly when it's election time and then they disappear for the rest of the year. We're going to break for some music and when we come back, we'll be continuing this discussion on humiliation by looking at the purpose of humiliation in marginalized society. Oh 
Welcome back. So what is the purpose of humiliation? Everything we talk about in these podcasts leads to one simple root, and that is that we live in an ego-driven society where some want to be better than others. And this is where social exclusion comes from. An ego-driven society means it's all about me. It's about individual acts to bring about individual benefits. It's about me having a vision and imposing it on others. It's about me being at the top and others being at the bottom. It's about me being better and blocking the way to others improving themselves and their situations. An ego-driven society is a selfish society. It's self-centered and it seeks to dominate others. A people-centered society, on the other hand, is about we. It's about acknowledging that we all can be better together and by improving ourselves as a collective, by having a shared vision, a vision driven by an equal society, everyone has a chance. All of us can improve for our collective benefit. And we can exist harmoniously with, with each other because if you gain, then I gain too. Humiliation emanates from this ego-driven approach. We see each other as threats and we are possessive about our resources. And it's not just about money. In our social media world, you know, likes are the new currency. And even though it's so easy to like something, we don't want to support each other's projects and efforts, even though we can, even though it does not cost us anything, even though it may help someone. Somehow we think that if we share, if we help one another, that we become less. So humiliation serves the purpose of eradicating the competition by destroying others. We're going to break again for some music and when we come back we'll be discussing the impact of humiliation.
Welcome back. So what is the impact of humiliation? Well, it destroys self-confidence. It creates self-doubt. It sows the seeds of self-hate and self-destruction. Now, as you may know, margin supports the semicolon movement, and a semicolon is a metaphor for the prevention of suicide. So we want people to give themselves a chance and to never contemplate becoming a full stop. And the thoughts relating to suicide very often relate to these things, the lack of self-confidence, self-doubt, self-hate, which leads inevitably to self-destruction. So we are of the view that these byproducts of social exclusion need to be stopped in their tracks before they reach the stage of self-destruction, self-harm. And all of our podcasts relate to that but humiliation is the emotion that causes for people to give up humiliation is being denied dignity it is going for a job interview and being rejected it's going to the bank and being denied a loan it's falling in love and having your affections rejected it's being abandoned by people you entrusted to care for you it makes you feel like you are nothing and because you believe it to be true you lose hope in life and you resort to death and the message from margins is don't do it and after this break we're going to discuss why ourselves from humiliation. Well, Gandhi once said that he who is humble can never be humiliated. 
And it sounds nice, but it's something that took me a long time to understand. To be humble is to have a sense of self, a sense of self that doesn't change. It remains constant, and it's your true north. So when you change direction, it stays in the same place. When things are great, you are still the same person. And when things turn for the worst, you're still the same person. A sense of self means being humble. It means you have humility. And humility is the opposite of humiliation. You have no need to humiliate others because you are centered in yourself. So you're not threatened by anyone. At the same time, humility means that the opinions of others don't matter. So when others try to humiliate you, subordinate you, bully you, and make you feel powerless and inferior, you have a personal power and a sense of self that allows you to tr transcend the attempts of the ego-centered society to humiliate you. But they can't because they cannot displace your own center. There is a story in the Masnavi that was written by the Sufi saint Jamaluddin Rumi and the story relays the sense of self in a beautiful way and the story is retold in Paolo Cujo's book The Alchemist. In the story the son of a king is sent to a wise man to learn the secret of life. The young man arrives at the house of the wise man and he is given a spoon filled with oil. The wise man tells the prince to go around his home with the oil and to not spill the oil. The prince does as he is told and returns to the old man. Well, what did you see? asked the wise man. I didn't see anything, responds the prince. I was trying not to spill the oil, he says. Well, go around again and come back and tell me what you saw, the wise man says. And so the prince goes around the wise man's house again. And this time he observes in detail the home. He returns to the wise man again and the wise man asks, well, what did you see? And the, and the prince describes what he saw. But what about the oil? asks the wise man as he points to the spoon. That's the secret of life, he says. The secret of life is seeing the world in all its glory and all its ugliness. It's moving through life but never losing the oil in the spoon. And the oil in the spoon is our sense of self. It's our center. It's our sense of personal power. There are certain properties about you that are unique to you. And maybe no one told you this, but those properties allow you to add value to the world. It gives you meaning and purpose. Self-awareness is about finding the thing that makes you you and embracing it with all the love in your heart, finding comfort and pride in it. When the world puts you down and you know it will, you hold on to that thing because that thing will give you the power to come up every time you've been kicked down. So our advice at Margins is don't give up. Don't give up until you have met the person that you are. You develop that sense of personal power and self and you stay centered in it until you have fallen in love with that person and you have given that person the chance to reach their full potential. Thanks so much for joining us on this podcast on humiliation and we hope you'll join us again next time. Thanks and goodbye. How many people had to survive? So you could arrive How many people had to survive So you could arrive How many people had to survive So you could arrive How many people had to survive
had to survive. 